Shall we start the meeting? I will start by doing a roll call. And let's start with uh, Rick Accountis. Here. Uh, Marshall Allen. Here. Uh, and she's not here. Um, Fall yeah. employment. Oh, she come in? Okay. And are you here? I'm here. <laughs> Paul Mayer? Here. Uh, Philip Schuckelmeyer? Here. And, and Alan Wooden? Here. Yeah, everybody's here. Yay. Uh, next to item of agenda is approved uh, the uh, agenda. And there is one little mistake here. Uh, number three says for uh, A to June 2623, Paul. Uh, Oops. So, uh, I make a motion to approve the minutes with the amended date. Any second? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. The third thing is to approve the previous uh, minutes for June 26. I, I got a correction on that as well. Um, it says, well, I, I didn't attend last month's meeting, but it says when I got the German, I approved our second the German. Um, confused. I can, I'm trying to hear what you said. I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. He was not here the last I wasn't here last meeting, but I disapproved it. Well, then I didn't think so. Well, that's pretty talented. She's right. been doing that here. I dialed in. She's been doing that every month for the past few years. Is that the first one to finally catch it? So good job. Thank you. <laughs> Don't do what I say. Uh, okay, I have a motion to approve the minutes as corrected. Motion to approve the minutes as corrected. Second. All in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes unanimously. Uh, I don't think we have any public, any public people. Let's see, there we're going to uh, number five. Communications from the uh, pros, Keith, Ryan, and Sam Keith. All right. Um, we had an absolutely outstanding July, the single best revenue generating month ever. I think it could be. We never made that much money in one month. Um, the rounds are a little skewed because I forgot to bring in the league rounds, so those are going to show up in August, but I'll balance out. It'll be more in August and less in July. Um, those rounds come in at zero because revenue comes in in you know May or June. So re revenue running in early, the rounds are running in once a month. Sometimes the months get by and forget to bring those rounds in. So um, anyway, great month, 236. We're up 131 for the year, um, and a little bit down in rounds, which I'm fine with. And we're having another great month. We went over. $200,000 as of yesterday for this month as well. So four straight months over $200,000 is remarkable. It really is. And I, uh, I remember the days when we used to be happy to get to like 130. And those days weren't that long ago. So to be able to do this is really awesome. Really exciting. So great month. Golf course is in great shape. Brian's done a fantastic job. And uh, looking forward to September. In October. Right. <laughs> uh, so the same with, with what Keith said there, kind of knocks it. It's been July was was fantastic. Uh, sunset was projected for seventy four thousand six hundred ninety seven uh, revenue and came at one of six five sixty two, and then rounds projected <coughs> at uh, five thousand sixty nine came in at uh, fifty one sixty six. And courses, the course is in fantastic shape. Ryan and Danny have done a fantastic Danielle third band, not Danielle. <laughs> not me. Danny uh, stole. Uh, but those those guys have been doing a fantastic job. And uh, that's, that's all I have really. Thank you. Same. Same here. Uh, July was a record month for Deep Creek as well. Um, May was the first month we ever went over 300. Um, so this is three months in a row. 331, 8.5. So far in August, we're at 282,000, which is exactly where we were last year for the entire month of 
August. I think we're going to hit 300 again. I think we're real close. It's, it's been amazing. Uh, it's been an amazing summer. Um, rounds are slightly up. Course has been in great shape. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's kind of a hero this year with uh, all the rain and everything. But the guys here in Longmont, they just do an amazing job. I get, I hear from the outside folks that come in from uh, other courts, I hear it all the time. They do a great job these guys do. So they're delivering a great product, and the um, and the golfers are coming. Good, good. Anything else? Okay, item six, old business. There is no old business. Item seven, irrigation sidewalks. Who is doing that? I am. All right. So, so, quick presentation here for you guys on one of the uh, projects we actually, the farm projects we got done. We got done. Had this money from back from all the bond projects, same one as with the uh, maintenance building and two pieces of irrigation system. So, this is just a small one <clears throat> that we had in there that got approved back in 18. 18 for, I think we had 282000 in there. The satellites came up to about 253 so that gives me a little bit more money to spend. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> So yes, yeah, so it is one of the bond projects, and uh, it's going to be the new operating system out of Ute Creek. Ours was backed off of uh, 1995 was when the irrigation system went in. So this is what the satellite boxes. They were, looked probably a little nicer back then, but this is what they look like now. We took them out in I think it was May, and this is what the 2023 satellite boxes look like. So not only does it help the aesthetics out there, I mean obviously they're tucked off into the out of bounds, so people do see them and they obviously look a lot better. So, um, this is the inside of the new controllers here. The old controllers had um, 32 stations, so they basically just had one of these front side that's 32 stations right there. So, you Creek, some of the fairways are so spread out there that we had to have a lot of stations doubled up, so there'll be like two wires going into there. But these satellites they have 64 stations, 32 on the front. 32 on the back. So therefore we can have 64 stations total per, per, per clock, which lets us um, <clears throat> have individual control, which gives us better control of the field. We don't have as many wet spots, dry spots. It, it helps um, give us balance everything out a little bit. So this is the front side here. You can see all that stuff up there. There's fuses up there. There's fuses down here. Those fuses help with lightning strikes. So if there was some lightning that came in the area, those fuses would blow down there at the bottom instead of frying the whole satellite. So you're replacing a $5 fuse compared to a $40,000 you know, controller and stuff like that. So, um, and then this is the backside. They have the, the same thing satellites here. This is, I mean, this stuff's over my head too. I mean, I could give you a little bit about it, but that's why we have a, have our contracts with Floro and NSN and they help us jump come out of something like that goes goes wrong too. So that's the irrigation satellites that you guys see out there on the course. And then this is what's on the inside. So if that top flips up, then this is what you'll see here. So this is the old base plate from the 1995 satellites. You could do about two or three things on this satellite. You can see it, you can see a multi-manual and a syringe here. Um, that's about all you can do. You can go inside on the bottom there, you can flip stations on. But this satellite here, or this space right here, is called, um, you can do basically everything you can do at the central computer. So this is basically a computer right here. You'll see you got the, the home button there, so you'll hit that, that'll take you to the home screen, it'll show you date, time, um, when it starts to run, like say our irrigation starts at eight o'clock, it'll show you what's coming on there and how long it runs and every satellite, you can work your way through the whole thing. Um, the screen that's on there right now is multi-manual. So you see they have stations one through five to run for 12 minutes and um, stations six through 12 to run for six minutes. So then you scroll down and where it says, it's how many you want to run simultaneously, usually run one and then they'll work their way through the through their progression 
for the amount of time that you have on there. So you can kind of set them up if you have time. A lot of times we have to run four or five at a time because we're trying to beat golfers and you know golfers coming up behind us. We don't want anybody to get wet and kind of ruin their day. So that's a nice feature. Same as here, except you can run more stations at a time. Um, my favorite one probably is a diagnostic key. You can do, you can check, um, you can run satellite, or you can, sorry, not satellite stations. They have a key where you can go and club, um, turn that, and it'll go one, two, three, all the way through. It's a good way to be able to get out into the field and check, make sure everything's working. Um, and you can go through a lot faster. This one, you'd have to go down there, toggle it on the bottom, and um, go all the way through this way, just so you can keep your head up and still work through and know where, where golfers are and all that stuff. So, um, but you can check um, amperage to the south or to the irrigation heads, which means a, a, a sorry, solenoid should be running about two and or point two amps, and if it's up or above that, it means your solenoid could either blow or not have enough power to turn it on. So either one of that, your head's not going to work. So that's and there's I mean there's a <coughs> unlimited number of things that this. Um, faceplate can do, you know, we, we usually use maybe three or four of the main things that you can, that you can um, do in there. Like, there's a communication check, you can check from the field, make sure all your satellites are talking, that you know they're working. So, um, it's, <laughs> it's crazy what they can do there. It's called a smart satellite for a reason, and that's <laughs> what it is. It's, it's basically a computer out in the field, so. This is what's set up in our office. That's a map of the whole course, and it's sorry, it's hard to see, but um, there's little, this, every sprinkler head that we have on the course is on this map. There's a little dot on there, so you can scroll around the map and find each head. And you can turn it on from here, you can adjust the percentages up and down, like if there's a wet area out there, you can just adjust the percentages down or up, depending on whether it's dry. This is a, kind of the hub of what you, all the different things you can do from the central computer and I'll just go through a few of those. So this is the control center. This has every single head out there on the course, which there's about 1800 heads out there and 40 different satellites. So this is, um, I think this is number three. It'll start with all the T's right there, <coughs> go to the roughs. But when we purchased this from Toro and San, they went in and put all this stuff in there for us. Um, there's definitely some tweaks that we've had to do out there. They didn't get everything exactly right, but they got everything hooked up and the majority of it in there. So we've had to go through and, like I said, with that diagnostic tool, go through and write down if it's actually a T, if it's actually a rub, you know, so because everything runs at different percentages. So you want to have everything dialed in there exactly to where it is on the course. Um, but then you'll see there. There's the whole, the number of sprinklers. Sometimes if we do have a couple doubled up because the way we had to do it in the past, we had to you know, what they call daisy chain some heads together so we could get some in some areas where it was uh, getting dry. And then they have the, the, diff, the type of sprinklers. We have 750s, 780s, um, infinity type of sprinklers. Those are all different heads that Toros came through in the years and then the nozzle type. And then this over here has a mark where you can see these are like along the cart path over here. So they're running only 180 degrees compared to 360, which, you know, out in the fairways or anything you want to run 360. So, so yeah, there's 40 different things of these and you got to go through and, and make sure everything's dialed in. So watering plan is what we set up every night. You'll see it starts with greens, tees, um, fairways, roughs over there. So what, how we water is by ET and it's not like the exact ET that you're losing a day. If we were to try to replace that with water, this would be, we'd be running until 10 o'clock in the morning, starting at 8 o'clock at night. So we try to get close, you know, and this does a, a good job. If we were to water that much, everything would be soaking wet out there every time. You know, there's, there's times when it gets away from us and we have some wet spots out on the floor. So we try to dial it back, but um, you'll see where it says, and sorry, this one's kind of blurry too, but it says um, adjust, percent adjust. So that's where we put in, we usually try to water between 0.05 and 0.2, something like that. Like that hot stretch in, in late July, there was a lot of 1.520 nights where we put some that much water out there. And uh, But 
you know, try to keep it on the dry side. Brown's okay, we just don't want it to start losing turf out there. Brown's more playable than soaking, sorry, soaking wet turf. And, and then they have a start time. We start at sunset, um, plus 11 minutes. So that just gives a little golfers a little bit of chance to get out there. And they have a, a feature, which is really nice here. You can start like 16, 17, and 18, um, a little bit later, like we have 16 starting 10 minutes or 15 minutes past sunset, 17 starting 20, and 18 starting 30, just in case those last couple of people are, are taking a little longer, you know, like the pros are like scraggling around out there. So so that's the that's the watering plan, and then this shows me what's watering for the night. So you can see right here it's starting at 8 o'clock, and this one's running till about I don't know 2:30 in the morning. And that's at um, probably about 1 over 1 5 um, ET for all the different programs we have there. And you can see there we're at the, about 500,000 gallons for the night. So, um, so that's, that'll show me if I missed something, if I have something that's off and as far as time, and it's starting up here. If it was starting up here, then I can go back and you know, adjust it before the night comes and start blasting all those. And this is our my probably our favorite one. The salesman that sold us this system says that this is like your morning cup of coffee. You go in there and check everything. This will show you what ran, what didn't run. Um, you know, it'll show you everything that happened the night before without going out to the field and being able to to check or you know miss it. Like if some, you don't see anything running for a few days, you'll see them here before you start getting brown or uh, too wet or something like that. It'll give you if it's running above expected time or below expected time. Um, it's just a really handy feature of this new system. Our old stuff was not even close to this. You were having to be out there. There was time with the old system that stuff would blow. That's why we had the problem with three green last year. We didn't know that, that it wasn't running and, and then you lose it. So this would have showed us right away that that wasn't running and we could have been out there a little quicker. So. So that's just a quick overview of what that bond project did for us, and, and it's been night and day difference for us out there. I think the course has been a lot better for it. I mean, obviously the rains helped us this year. We haven't, been able to, haven't had the water as much, but uh, but this has definitely helped too. So, so anybody have any questions about the new operating system? Two two questions. First, does it measure consumption, water consumption? No, no, we don't have any like sensors or anything out there. You can, but then you're. We've got a great year with rain and rain. Right. Before we get into drought conditions, we can. I know you can measure by time, but I was wondering if you could do it. Like yeah, I know they. That's like an irrigation audit type thing, where you know you go put catch cans out there and kind of see. But we don't have anything like that out in the field on a daily what, basis. Wonder if the system is. No, no. But, but <laughs> how, how much water are you? See, yeah, that's your question, right? What's that? How much water? <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you meant how much was actually going into the ground. No, just how much you're. Oh yeah. Out, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what right. I said. Like that five hundred thousand was kind of a. That's a really dry or a hot night. You know, we're putting out five hundred thousand gallons over the whole course. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, sorry. I, and I so what's it. what's the warranty on the system? <laughs> if they're they're pretty good. Um, like the operating system. I don't, is is uh, I would imagine like a couple of years, but they'll come out. And we actually have a contract with Toro, which we call it NSA, and they're coming and they'll replace everything. That's any time. Like if we were to get a lightning strike or something like that, they would have a new controller, or we have a um, uh, field interface unit. They call it. It's what sends a signal out to the field, out to those satellites, and they would have that sent to us. So basically, we're covered no matter what, but we pay for it in the long run. So we're good. Yep, we're good. <laughs> yep. All right, perfect. Yep. So does Toro provide you with like mo mobile access so you can access Right, like yeah, I can iPad do, or something. Right, There's I can do everything from my phone. Yeah, a lot of times it's easier with a phone or an iPad than with yeah. console files. So if you do see me out there, I'm not texting <laughs> or anything. I'm usually <laughs> turning on heads or, or you know, scrolling the internet or something. But yeah, they do. And they're great. They have two different apps. They have one that's an actual app. You can do basic stuff on it, and then you can get into the cloud. Everything's on the cloud for them. So it's called Links Cloud that you can get into. And it's a, it's kind of, a, I wouldn't say a dumbed down version of it, but it's just a little less, but you can still do the main things that you need to do. It doesn't have all the different stuff. And just one more question. I, I think you said, is this just for you? This one is for you. Sunset has the, 
same operating system, and as soon as Ryan gets his irrigation system going, he'll have it also. So I knew ours, ours, I had to go put in all those sprinkler heads on that map because ours isn't GPS. So when he gets his, everything's gonna be to the you know inch out on the ground and, and all that. Ours is ours is guesstimated and and that's why I'm going through back through all the stations too because some of the wires got put into different areas and so it's a whole process. Like it's gonna take us this year to get it completely dotted. Too, too, too big. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But but they did most of the work, the hard part, you know, the technical <laughs> stuff and they did all the satellites, they rewired everything, bolted them down, hooked up all the power, the communication, all that stuff. They did all that stuff for us. So great. Yeah, it was uh, it was one of those things where you were waiting. We we did it in maybe like October and they said, Oh, they'll be here in December and then we got pushed back. Every month they got pushed back. Toro's having a tough time with the supply chain with irrigation and equipment right now too. So but they're the top of the line, so you wait for it. I haven't played since the middle of last week. But then, if you, there were a few wet spots, but generally speaking, the fairways in particular were just sensational. Yeah, they like, I appreciate that. Um, they've been good this year, and I, <laughs> I don't know if it's the new system or if it's the rain that's helped us out and I'm in the water. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm going with the system. <laughs> I'm not giving it up. I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up. So, but like I said, it is still a work in progress. So there are a few areas I know what you're talking about, and trying to find that exact balance is is the key. We had it kind of dialed in with the old system, but this is 100% different. So the one thing that'll help Dan out a lot too is his old system was controlled by every three seconds. So a signal was set out, so if something was set to stop running at, say 9.05 p.m. on the dot, or 9.05 and two seconds, his old system would round up every three seconds for control, his new one is to the second. Huh. We'll sell that. Yeah, it's probably actually more than it. it. went to the minute almost before, but yeah, that's their whole selling point now too, is everything's dialed into the second, and it fills in all the gaps that, that um, water window the pyramid thing I showed it fills in all those if something shuts off it'll fill that in and keep it nice and tight too so, so it was uh, well worth it. So, um, any other questions about the new system? Any questions about irrigation in general? <laughs> no? Alright well that's uh, well thank you very much. You bet. It. It's it's one of the bond <laughs> projects we got done. You got one Jeff? <laughs> Now the next item is the bond project update. That will be me. So we are, after five years, finally getting very close. <laughs> and say we're there. <laughs> so we are currently in, in uh, contract, contract negotiations with a company to do the maintenance facility at U Creek. From the time that we met in June until tonight's meeting, and actually August 8th, uh, we were $2.2 million short in trying to make this happen. So, uh, staff worked with uh, the finance department and uh, golf actually took out a loan of 1.7 million dollars from the city's fleet fund to get us closer and then we're going to use a half a million more dollars more i say more because we already used 1.5 million this year to pay to get us what we thought would pay for it we're still 2.2 million short. We're borrowing 1.7 million and we're taking a half million away from our fund balance to be able to get this done. And the, the fear is, is if we wait another year to make this happen, we're afraid we're gonna be you know, a million or $2 short again. So um, 
the, the payment for the 1.7 million is for 10 years at uh, around $200,000. And the timing of that worked out well, and part of the reason why it could be considered is that the debt for you Creek is being paid off this year. We had one final payment of $80,000 and we were gonna own the, the golf course outright. But again, because the decision was made, and it was money 25 years ago, to not build a, a maintenance facility, that we cannot continue to operate in our existing facility. So it's our hope that we will actually, on Thursday of this week, have our first construction meeting, and uh, construction could actually start by October 2nd. So things are, are really starting to move uh, uh, along. This is the view from um, the uh, Highway 66. This is the maintenance facility, two bays, and then the storage facility. And I, I think you've all seen these, but I'll just show them again since uh, we're talking about at least something positive for a change. Gives you kind of a, a view of the site plan. Highway 66 is up here, our parking for staff, maintenance building, um, just about 4,700 square feet, and then storage, cold storage for all of our equipment. All, most of that equipment right now sits out in the elements uh, all, all year long. So that, that's going to be uh, some really good options for our wear and tear. Anybody remembers the silo that's been designated as a historic uh, preservation thing, so that will be staying. As soon as the work is completed uh, with the maintenance facility, we'll be spending about fifty to $70,000 on the silo because it has some foundation uh, damage that, that we'll need to take care of. Uh, we have a company ready to go, but didn't want to do that until the other uh, construction was completed. Rick, did you have a question? I do. What, what's the purpose of the silo? <laughs> the purpose of the silo. And, and why are we spending all the money on it? Because it is designated as a historic landmark. Damn it. Okay. And, uh, it's required by the city. We are, oh, okay. yeah, we are required to not do anything but fix that silo. So it's not going anywhere. Okay. Jeff, I thought you said at one time that a portion, a portion of the building is going to just be a roof, right? Mm -hmm. the building. That was one of the things we were considering. Because okay. we borrowed the money, we're going to get two. We're going to build out what we need, and that should last then for the next 15 years <laughs> as he's uh, supervising. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final uh, drawing I'll show you is just kind of a, a view of what the the buildings will look like. So one of the one of the requirements by the city is that you um, you cannot build a, a a building that's 150 feet long without it having some type of of roof change, roof line change. Every 30 feet is is, is how that happens. So we've done some things that uh, go one more step here. That instead of having to pay a great deal of money to drop down and go up, because when when it's over the maintenance uh, area, you can't drop down because then we can't use the lift to raise our equipment. So we were able to do some color differential and some uh, just adjustment on the peaks to be able to address that. The other thing is you can't just have to build a metal building. So as, as you look at this, to tie to this, to kind of the, the silo or the, the, the farm kind of 
uh, look. We've tried to use some garage doors, barn doors, some different uh, colors along the building to try to make it look better to the surrounding neighbors than just uh, uh, a metal building. And so that was all required as a part of the um, planning process, which uh, took us about a year to get through with the different types of our times we had to go back after they gave us feedback. So anyway, October 2nd, we're uh, headed in the, the right direction to be able to um, complete uh, that that project. At what projected cost at this point? It, uh, it, right at 5.4 million, right? Four. Four, four but yeah, the golf, sorry, the yeah, irrigation is yeah. uh, four, yeah, four, four point four million is, is what that has, which includes, the, this is a large number, but we need to have $800,000 in contingency to address those things that come up uh, throughout the project. So if they, they dig out in the ground and all of a sudden uh, we have some type of groundwater issue, we have to have that money set aside. Hopefully we won't have to spend all of that, but, but that is uh, a part of it. On the irrigation, it's five point, just under $5.4 million. And to be able to make that project happen, we had to, to happen is we had to take out some of the things we wanted to have done. And uh, I would say here at Twin Peaks, we'll be getting about 90% of what we wanted to have done. We, we really wanted to do more around the sur surrounding edges so that uh, those of you that golf here know how dry it gets towards the edge on, on 10 and out on, on two. Um, and we'd like to carry, we wanted to try to carry that uh, um, out to the edges, but, but we had to make some cutbacks to be able to do that. Um, but other than that, the, this project will be almost completely done. Sunset, we've, we've had to back off uh, e even more. We, we can't afford to do any of the replacement of the water lines in the ground. What we're gonna do is in 15, we replaced all the, the um, sprinkler heads on the um, south side of Long's Peak. They're gonna go in and replace all of the heads and rewire so that we can do some of the controlling that Dan described this evening. And then we'll also do work on our pump stations to be able to replace pumps and motors. So that will all be brand new. And then we'll need to start saving money to start replacing the lines at, at some point over there. So that's kind of where we're at with the, the, the two projects. Again, the election was passed in November of 2018, and it's taken us a lot more money and a lot of time to be able to be able to start moving some some dirt and building things. If things all go to plan with our contract, uh, work could start as early as late October or November here at uh, Twin Peaks, and some work over at uh, Sunset. The, the primary work that will happen during the winter is a replacement of the two pump stations that we have here. And again, the work we'll do at sunset. So kind of a quick update on, on those projects. Um, it it uh, is a really good feeling to at least be able to start getting some, some, some work done because it's been a long time coming. Any questions? Your thoughts? Great job all of you guys. For, I mean, it, I know it hasn't been easy and I know it's been frustrating and what a process. And what a great job you guys grinding through. I can't imagine how many meetings and then you get it back and then we got to go make changes and it's just, you guys, what a great job. So it's nice to be being able to at least see See the race now so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about thank yous in uh, about uh, a year. Let's just start moving here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Great job moving it to this point. Yeah. <laughs> so, anything else about your uh, presentations? Okay, let's move on to number eight, which is items from the staff. I, I do have some. So it's nice that all the board is here to, tonight to be able to have this conversation. Um, I want to check in with everybody to, to make sure you as board members are feeling like you have a purpose and that you're being able to uh, provide input and yeah some of our meetings you know they're we're you know we're virtually done and we've been here for 35 minutes and I just I just want to hear from you about are you okay with that or what things would you like to see on the agenda that would give you more, the opportunity for more feedback or again to make uh, the board feel like it has more purpose I'm going to raise my hand. I, I want to yes. hear. I want to know what council thinks. I mean, we, we can we can give you know advisory thoughts and suggestions and share our feelings about what's going on in the golf course world or recreation in general, I guess. But what does council want? You know, are, are we just rubber stamping stuff? Listen to you guys tell us all the great things you're doing, or does council have a purpose for us? Okay. Are there some things where, where you're running into, uh, you know, uh, roadblocks where input from some of us might help? I mean, there's people with extremely varied backgrounds on this board, and maybe there are some things that we can contribute. I mean, if, if we're talking about the 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 U Creek U Creek uh, Clubhouse project, for instance. Obviously, that's going nowhere for the foreseeable future. So is there anything that we could offer in the way of suggestions to maybe make some modifications, do some things a little differently that would we feel might accomplish most of the purpose, but yet enable us to get to a little bit sooner because it might be a little less expensive or a little more efficient? Sure. <clears throat> We're, we're looking at, uh, we're starting to talk about uh, uh, fees for next year as far as our membership and, and passes. Is that something you all would like to talk about? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's not really out. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that would be a great conversation because it also gives us more of an opportunity to really talk about how much more expensive things are uh, with uh, our operation. Uh, Paul and I, early in the, the year, had a conversation about the, the cost of uh, going up for cart rentals. And uh, having that conversation, I think, helped Paul uh, better understand uh, how, how much more we're paying for carts this lease period than we have been in the past. So being able to share that and have having a two-way conversation or I, I don't, I, I get tired of, I feel like staff does all the talking or, or the pros and you all are listening, but we're really not giving you enough opportunity to, to talk to us instead of the other way around. So, so fees, we, we'll probably uh, look at bringing uh, to you in October to at least start that conversation. So I'm kind of going in line with the fees, and, and I don't know if anybody's done this or not. Have we looked at what other courses in our moment and have we tracked it as far as what other courses are raising fees percentage-wise or dollars over the last five years that we could have a comparison as yeah. well to see that we're staying in line with everybody else and not putting ourselves out of the market because We've been doing great with revenue now. I just don't want to, where we put ourselves out of the market because we're going to raise our fees too much. Right. And as long as we've got a study or some data points to look at uh, to make sure that we're not doing that. Yep. Danny has that information she did earlier 
uh, this year that uh, we'll update and provide that to you all. It's a little hard to do. You can't really compare apples to apples. There, it's not exact, but I mean, you just can see percentages wise. Well, you have what, dynamic pricing, and a lot of people have not moved to that yet, although they're considering it. So, but what's but, our published rate? I mean, I know that we have dynamic pricing that mm -hmm. the pros have. Where you and can finding change. it's about three to five percent, let's say, you have raised it. So we're comfortable, but I do have the data and I know it looks better for that. That would be great. But the good news about our situation is that we are fluid enough that if we if we do raise them up and we find out that that is starting, we're going to know pretty quickly. Agreed. We're going to know pretty quickly. So then it's like, okay, well, now we maybe have, have overshot the moon a little bit and now we need to go the other direction. So that is the nice thing about the way our fees are now and the way to construct them and our ability to have that flexibility of dynamic pricing. Because back in the day, we, 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 teeth change anything. we would raise fees and it would take, and you guys don't remember this because none of y'all were here, I was not. But it was, it was six months of meetings in, and, and followed in six months of meetings and justifications and and all the reasons we got to raise fees, and then we, you, you guys had to eventually either decide if we're going to pass the fees or not pass the fees, and then it had to go through council, and council had to approve it. And quite frankly, if one person from the public came to council and said no, they might just say no. And it was very difficult the for us. The problem we had in the past is, yes. uh, and I don't think this works like this at all, we, we had a lot of board members that basically told us what they're going to pay. And we could, it was, that's really how it was. And wow. it was really a horrible way that business was done here for a lot of years. Um, I think some of the reasons we're behind on so many projects is we weren't generating the revenues that we should have for a lot of years. The dynamic pricing has changed that. That, that started the process, even before COVID. If you go back to when we started the process of dynamic pricing, we look at our incremental increases in revenue year over year. Yes, COVID helped us. But we were already digging our way out simply because we were charging differently. And back then we were charging less to attract more people. Now we're charging more. And, and actually, you know, having to keep the round stable, but charging more and making more, which is nice because if you have nothing but ball to wall golfers all the time, it almost is always really slow on the golf course. So we're, we're, it's really the flexibility we have now. That's the, the best thing we did. The other thing about dynamic pricing, you know, as far as our competitors, I don't know about you guys, but I go online and I look at, okay, what's Saddleback charging this weekend? You know, well, it's, we got a better product than they do. Yeah, do. I, you know, and there's times where they're charging a hell of a lot more than we are. So, you know, I'll talk to the guys with golf, and I was like, hey, let's, uh, let's dynamic up a little bit, you know, during this time slot. So that dynamic pricing has given us a lot of leverage to maximize, maximize revenues when we can. And also, well, not so much best of years, but also the opportunity to discount to backfill those soil counts. Just out of curiosity, have you had any public feedback on the cart fee increase? No. No. The so, outlet, for, for example, Saddleback, 20 bucks, we're 18. Yeah. Um, the, the only other uh, comment that I had was about the range balls increasing and uh, explained to that person and they they were okay with that after. But generally, um, a little bit of feedback initially about going up $5, but uh, not bad. You know, not, nothing real serious. Even at even that work, because we, 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 you know, we interface with the customers constantly and very, I mean, as a matter of fact, wow, you guys have great prices here. <laughs> I know. Right? Okay. We're, like, we're, we're like on our maximum. I don't think there's any review that says it's overpriced. Well, no, I've never no. seen any review that no. says it's course no. overpriced. Yeah. You know, you Creek is a $100 plus golf course all over the U.S. because I play a lot of golf. Exactly. Of course, it's comparable to yours and even twins. They're 100 plus. Yep. I don't know what's the saddle back now? $85. Yeah. Right. But even with all that said, yeah. I Yeah, but the West Nile is free if you go over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all that said, my, my, my personal concern is as an industry, you know, that if we're all not careful, we're gonna price our we're all gonna price ourselves out. I mean, you know, that if we want to maximize revenue, but I think we all need to be careful outside there. I don't know about the park board, that's right. Two two or three. The the other thing just, just to add, 
that we no longer have to go to council to have our fees uh, approved. When we went to dynamic pricing, uh, council delegated that authority to the city manager who then delegated that to, to me to be able to set fees and be, because we can't say we want to raise $5 and have to wait two weeks to get to council. And then, and then we want to lower it three dollars, and we have to wait another two weeks. Yeah. So it just wouldn't work that way. So we've been very lucky to have trust put in in the staff and the and the pros to be able to be responsive. Which has been great. And even hearing your feedback right now, I'm thinking, okay. So any more from the staff? Uh, finally, the items from the board. And I'd like to start this off. Uh, as you may all know or don't know, um, I'm 84 years old. I used to have three guys I used to play golf with all the time for the last 10 or 15 years. And unfortunately, they've all passed away. So as a result of that, I ended up playing with people I, know, I don't know. Like this morning, <clears throat> I played with two nurses. But I'm, what I'm getting into. So I get a feedback from people that, are, that I don't know, you know, et cetera. And I start, and I'll ask the questions. What do you like about the course? Or is there something you'd like to see different or anything like that? So along these lines of talking about, about uh, uh, fees, I played with three guys. Uh, they were in their 30s, I guess. And so it was really nice. That, that's nice. One nice thing is everybody I played with was really nice. So anyway, I said, well, where are you from? And they said, well, we're from Erie. I said, well, why are you playing here? Uh, first thing was, well, the price is really nice. Number two, it's close. Number three, the course is in fantastic condition. And the greens are except, except, exceptional. So, Keith, I wanted to pass that on to you. But they, they raved about the course and how good it was and how good the greens were. And yeah, the greens are perfect. I play here, so they're really nice. So I want to pass it on to you. Uh, well, I said, is there anything that you'd like to see change? And they said, yes. I said, they said, it says golf etiquette. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, I thought that was, and, and, and they've played here a long time. And they said they knew that because of the uh, sickness we had, that, that we had a lot of new players. And they said, they said, I guess I don't, you know, they were talking to me and said, I don't know how you would tell them how to play to improve their etiquette, but I don't know if anyone has any ideas about that and what you can do, but I've had, I've actually played with several different groups that have complained about the etiquette of people in front of them. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's probably because we didn't have a bunch of new players and maybe that's it. And I don't know how to I don't know how to get that out into the to the to the group. I thought I'd pass that on. We we had a blog that Danny started and Ryan and Charles have done so I did one on Walmart repair. You know, but I just don't know if that's out there enough to where people are seeing it and all that or there's a way to I mean Send it out on mass emails, right? I think no. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's kind of one and of the I try things. to connect it back to the website so they can go through the previous. But yeah, you got to scroll down a little bit on the website, and I forget what you call it. What you call the blog? I think part of the problem, around the course. Part of the problem ends up being is that because some courses are at a lower price, they think that it's a lower quality product. Yeah. And so they don't feel they have to do the etiquette. They feel like they're, this is a place that they can come from. Yeah. hacks. They pay their money and they do they want. Yeah, exactly. They you know, they don't waste their events. They're just here drinking, doing whatever, don't care where they're driving, how they're reacting, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's been my experience on groups I've seen when I've played out here and you uh, over the last year or two. Is that, and it's not all of them. It's just, what, two or three groups in an 18 hole that you see like four and a half hours. Okay. But they stick out a lot. Not all of them, but there's one of them. We have a lot of new um, 20 and 30 year olds that are coming here, which is great. Yeah. I mean, it's, right. it's awesome. I mean, golf is strong. And we need all these younger guys to keep, to keep it that way. But, but you're right, the etiquette has um, deteriorated. It's, I think it's the, the, the marshals might be helpful. 
Well, my, my question yeah, is... Probably, probably, probably wants to listen to a Marshall. Some people yeah. are in place. I was a Marshall. Nobody listens to a Marshall. Thank you. So, just to give you a, just, just a, a brief synopsis of what, what we're dealing with. I mean, we have, we have this, this, you know, we have all these folks like yourself who understand etiquette, who taught your children etiquette. Who, who made golfers out of your children and taught them etiquette. My father taught me etiquette. My neighbor taught me etiquette. I threw a club once and that was the last one I threw around the <laughs> Okay, I learned etiquette from these. I learned etiquette from folks that were older than me that I played golf with. This group of kids that are now playing golf, they all got forced into golf because they couldn't do anything else. And nobody has taught these people etiquette. And, and, then, and then even more of that, you have even older folks. I got, yesterday, I am out there giving a lesson in the back of the range. We had an event out here. It was five and a half hours ago. And I had been here in this one group that we're kind of all speaking about, hooting and hollering and screaming all day long. And I can't, I'm looking over on 14, I can't tell if they're on 14 or on five, but I know they're on the back line, but why are they talking to the people on five? And finally, they kind of, they kind of make their way towards me and at this point, I've had it, right? And I just bring them over and I say, okay, you guys, go in, you're done, go. Yeah. And he looked at me, he goes, no, no, I paid my money. I said, no, you guys are done. And after five and a half hours, you're done, go. And this is, this is an event that we had. And the guy looked at me, and I'm teaching a 17-year-old girl at the time. And he said, I paid my money, I can do whatever I want. He doesn't own this place. And as he drove off, I don't know why I can't even say what he said. And then they all flip me the bird from the middle of the fairway. They lined up and flip me the bird. And that's to your golf pro, who's actually asked, trying to make the golf game better for everybody else that's out there. Because they're ruining everybody's day. They needed to be done. So I basically told the whole tournament, you guys go. Had the marshal go out say, that's it, last hole, you're in. Go get out of here. I don't know if they finished or not, I didn't care. Because they were taking advantage. And that's what we're up against. And when they, and they're, if that's how they treat the golf pro, let me tell you how they're going to treat the marshal. <laughs> okay, it won't be pretty. And I don't need my guys getting hurt. Because this guy was ready to go. He was ready to go. <laughs> Just go. Just drive on now. And that's what we're up against. And it's tough. It really is. So you bring it to our attention. We know about it. I hold my breath beginning on Friday afternoon until Sunday night. And I know Brian does too. Because I'm calling Ryan every weekend. Well, two broken carts. Got a bench and got knocked over because someone ran into the bench. It's just unbelievable. So, so do we need like a warning placard at every counter? Say, They're not going to read. No, well, you point. I know Ryan's gone through this. Give me, the ability, give me the ability to start throwing people off. But if, but if they if they're on notice, give me the ability to start throwing. I would love off. to. I would when love I, when to. I have, when I have the authority to actually do that, then we have something. But we don't but, have but, but, Sam and I and our marshals don't have that in a written policy, though. Huh? We do have that in a written policy, you know that you we know, can that, remove them. But good luck. Remove them, you know. The only way that's going to happen is if, if you can somehow get. And that's rare. That's going to be tough to do. Yeah, it's very rare. That it's good luck getting them off there. Well, I'm I'm just sure you put them on notice. notice. Put them on notice yeah. whether they behave or not, whether you can enforce it or not. But if it puts it in their mind yeah. that I can be kicked off, whether you can or can't, yeah. they I might know. they might change their attitude. These are these. This feedback is what Jeff's asking for, and this is the feedback we need. The board of the past past feeds the feedback to help us kind of grow this next generation and give them the etiquette they need. Okay? And we can't be out there with each individual group giving it to them. But, but getting that feedback and getting some tips and some ideas, this is helpful. For sure. Uh, yeah, well, again, I'm going to just say a sign on, on the first team. You know, it's so out there. We really appreciate you that you her. I mean, that's something that really, even if, if some people don't even probably even know that there's golf in there. I mean, we have like, and that's exactly what exactly it is. I mean, the guys in there, they have her. Which is actually kind of You're cool. Right? I like the <laughs> music going as well, you know, but that's kind of a new thing. Sometimes they play a little too loud. I mean, there's certain things that, um, most of them are not, not, you know, bad guys like that. Most of them are having a great time. They're just wild and crazy, and um, it's actually great time for me. You know, so we got a, it's a fun, kind of a fine line. You don't want to 
which is, you know. Maybe game not in trouble with these guys. If you, if you don't want to deal with them, don't play on the weekends. That's, that's the thing. You come out in the afternoons on the weekends, that's when they're there. Oh, and, we, and we got a lot more of them now. I'm going to attest to this. We got a lot more of them now because Haystack is gone. And Flatirons is going through some reconstructive place. And they're busy all the time anyway. So we got all the boulder kits. And there is a ton of these boulder, CU boulder boys that come over and they play. I bet you we have, on a weekly basis, 15 to 50 groups of those kids. They were out here today. Boys were out here today playing college boys, out here today playing golf. Like, have you guys been ever go to class? You go to start to because they got classes tomorrow. Yeah. And Sam's right, they spent, had a little rain delay, they came in and spent 50 bucks like it was nothing. Well, anyway, that's one topic that came up. Uh, then I played with some other people, and uh, one of the one of the group that I played with, his name was Karen. And what I was surprised that I didn't know her who she was. She knew that I was the chairman of the golf board. It was Karen Romney. That's right. <laughs> she said, she said, I, I said, I said, I apologize, I don't know who you are. She said, I know, but if you bring my name up at the golf, she said, there'll be some people that know who I am. She says, I worked for a long month for 32 years. And I so I said, okay. And she says, I have some suggestions. So let me just work this out to you. Um, the day that we played, uh, I don't know, it was hot. Hot, 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 hot. It's been really hot. And she said, I wish, this is Twin Peaks, she said, I wish we had some areas where we could get water. And um, and I thought, well, I don't know, I put in a new irrigation system, we could put some water fountains in. But I, I, you know, I played golf in Las Vegas, and, um, <clears throat> and what they do is that they actually have, um, I can't speak English anymore, Big tubs, big uh, water coolers. You know, water coolers. You know, about every third or fourth uh, um, uh, spot, uh, tea spot, and then they have cups, etc. So I, I didn't know if that's something we could do here. If it was too expensive, or yeah, whatever. Well, let's let's let's, let's, yeah, let's rewind for a second. Yeah, we have. Because I, I I play here as well, and. Uh, <laughs> Bring one of these out every time I play, well, <laughs> we're all and I and I fill it up on what's called three three's working right? No, three's broken. Three's okay, broken. so I fill it up on I fill it up on four. I fill it up on seven. I fill it up on fourteen. So we have water fountains out there that are within proximity that you can get to. I'm, not, I'm never thirsty when I'm playing because I'm filling it up all the time. So the water fountains are already. What are you drinking when you play? <laughs> yeah. it's cool. yeah. um, so you, if the, the opportunities to fill up water is there. Okay. Uh, the second thing she brought up, and again, other yeah. women have brought it up to me, and that's a sunset and the bathroom issue. And and you know today I was playing with Kevin Lynn, and they had to use the bathroom, and so we started talking about it. And I said, well, you know, right. Over there, the maintenance is there's, there's the bathroom. Oh, I didn't know that. And I said, Well, I said, if you did know, I said, would you have waited until you got around over there? And she said, No, I couldn't have, couldn't have waited. She said, I don't think I'd want to walk across, you know, the fairway on on seven. Um, so anyway, the cleanliness of the toilets is that? Yeah, the, I guess it, you know, the, the, the port 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 port. Port. So I thought, well, what if we? Put a sign there and said an additional bathrooms are available over there or something. So I had, I had multiple, multiple, um, you know, places on it. It's just an idea. And that's, and that's yeah. easy to do, and that's an easy fairway to cross yeah. right there. Yeah. Right see. there, right there where the sport went. Because you cross there, and if you don't see anybody, there's nobody right. coming, and they're not going to hit it that far down the hill. So it's an easy place to cross, and it's 75 yards from the bathrooms. But you know, you can easily put a sign there that said initial bathrooms over there or whatever. Uh, the third thing that she said, uh, and she said to play New Creek, she said, Sam, if you want, could you uh, do something about some of the long holes for women? Which I thought was our mission, but there was, a couple, there was a couple of guys there that played New Creek. They said, yeah. And I said, well, which, which holes are those? And she couldn't 
she couldn't tell me which ones they were, but I don't know if there are a couple that are really long for the room or not. I have no idea. Well, like an additional thing. Is that what you're saying? I, I, I don't know. She just says, could you shorten them? Or maybe, I, I, I don't know what you could do. Or, or the markers in the fairway? <laughs> I, just, I, I mean, I'm already there. there. I have that same complaint. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'd bring these things up with me, so I just brought that in. That was the other thing she said. Your part three from the white tees are hard. <laughs> For me. So I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know if it's something that would be typically, you know, really long, you know, they, okay, maybe we could do something, maybe for another set of tees. There's five sets of tees. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, but I mean, the additional set of tees, one I can think of, and you can see it. The reason I can tell the fairway is just got a stash and put some tees out. Yeah. And that's what that's what we've done here at, at Twin Peaks. We have what's called beginner tees. The two hundred yards. They're, they're right. one fifty. Right? Yeah. yeah, they're one fifty. And I, Audrey's um, not a beginner. She she plays in she's played a league out there um, for several years at um, at New Creek. Um, she never mentioned that one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That was yeah. pretty happy. Yeah, she might be kind of having fun with that one, but okay. Uh, the other thing was about two weeks ago, I guess, I went to play them at Sunset, and I got out there, got to the clubhouse, and all the, uh, the, the uh, carts were basically all gas driven. I thought, well, what's happened to all of the, to the uh, fire battery ones? And I found out that they were struck by lightning. Yep. Yes. We had a lightning strike that uh, apparently somehow fried 14 of our controllers. Um, that took, what, about three weeks to repair them, give or take? Yeah, approximately, because um, the, the carts were finding out that they're so new and the parts aren't readily available for them, so they have to pull the parts off of the assembly line for new fleets to be built. So, are, are those our carts or do we just rent them? Those are so the carts are leased through us. We own, we we lease them through EasyGo, so they're our vehicles. Do, do we have to pay to do all that repair? So yes. they're under warranty, but warranty did not cover a uh, outside uh, because it, event. Yeah, but because it's going to be fourteen thousand dollars, we'll be able to do an insurance claim with our self insurance and get we'll get reimbursed for that. Oh, okay. Doesn't that doesn't, doesn't yeah. help us for three weeks <laughs> when. They're not operational, so uh, Keith sent some carts from here over. Sam sent yep. some carts over, and and yeah. so you know we worked well together. But that's one of those things, you know, you, you can't do really yeah, it. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was a weird uh, act of nature that I have never seen, yeah. to be quite honest. So well, we made it work. This morning, the fact that you're all back. And oh yeah, everything has been repaired uh, for the last. Uh, I think the, they were it was last. A week, a week and a half ago, they were all repaired because I had the Hanson on Saturday, um, and we had all the entire fleet, all thirty vehicles plus ten of the twelve gassers. We have two gassers that are having some issues that Yamaha or uh, Massix aware of. They just haven't come up yet. So, but uh, no, we made it work well. Everything was down, but everything's up and running. So. Good. Any other items from the board besides me? <laughs> so the the new maintenance uh, facility at U Creek. Any chance those bathrooms be available to the public? No, no, because no. yeah. it, it, it's in the maintenance area. It's yeah. not by like where it's right. Technically, because I do get asked that question a lot. But they're open. Mm -hmm. When are they going to get rid of the bathrooms on the course? <laughs> well, we've we've had different ideas of of adding them but they they haven't worked you know when when we were going to build at the central location it was right. close enough that we could have put a restroom there but right now that's on the back burner interesting yeah. Yeah. well if there's no more items do i have a motion to adjourn the meeting so I have any seconds a second all in favor of joining, say aye. Aye. Most of the